So in this video, I'm going to cover how to create these sci-fi columns inside of Plasticity. So I'm going to start with a brand new scene and click and drag and select and press the, the delete key on the keyboard to erase the object. Now, just as a side note, I'm using the Blender hotkeys in Plasticity. You can use whatever preset that you'd like, but just note that the hotkeys that you use may be different than mine. All right, I'm going to click this Z here on this widget so that we can view this from the top. Make sure that the snap to grid option is on and reduce the distance so that we have a lot of precision. All right, now I'm going to draw out some shapes. Now I'm going to actually draw this first shape as two different lines or curves. And this will allow us to hide parts of it without hiding the entire shape. So I'm going to hide this curve here and this will allow me to see the grid. So now I can create this base. And there we go. And I can turn that back on if I'd like. Now let's see. I'm going to hide it again and create a triangle. And let's see, we'll create another one here. Let's see, it looks like I messed that up. I like working with the grid because it allows me to use even distances very easily. Let's see, to make this, this is six units across, so I'm going to go six down. And there we go. So this is going to give us our basic shape. Now I'm going to add a top. Let's see, that didn't quite work. All right, and let's see here. I might create just one more shape to make this a little bit more interesting. Let's take these inside triangles and I'm going to actually hide the rest of, rest of our geometry. Make sure that the selection mode for points are turned on and press B. And this will allow me to give rounded edges to our triangles. I'm going to choose something like that. There you go. All right, so let's see, let's turn everything else back on or at least one at a time. So this, this will probably start with extruding this. And uh, let's see here, I'm going to select the face selection mode and click this face here, not one of the inside triangles, and extrude one unit up. In this case, one unit is 0.1 meters. And I'm going to click OK, and we have this nice shape with the different triangles and the different patterns. All right, looking pretty good. OK, and from here, let's turn on some of these others. I'm going to extrude this one, but so that we can see this better, I'm going to make sure that we're looking at this from the side and I'm going to extrude it, let's say maybe five units and click OK. Now with that, I'm going to grab the move tool and move it down. Let's see that. Wasn't okay. It looks it looks like I did six. Okay. Well, instead, let me grab this face here and see if we can offset it. So 
I'm going to offset that down and perfect. So now we can grab the move tool. I'm going to click the object selection mode and select the entire object here and move it down a couple spaces. So now this part of the column is completely in the center of this object here because we have an odd number of units. I really like the grid tool for this reason. It, it just makes my life easier for making sure that things are evenly spaced. All right, let's see. Let's take a look at some of these other shapes. I'm going to see if I can hide. There we go. So in this case, I actually want mm, a very thin column here. So what I'm going to do is reduce this to about half and make sure that I have the face selection, grab this and only go halfway. And then I'm going to select the move tool and I want to move it up along the Z axis, but instead of moving 0 0.05, I want to move half that distance, so 0 0.025. And now this column is in the middle. Now, one other thing I want to do, because I think it will make this look better, is I'm going to grab this, and let's see, we will need, can I move this down a little bit? It looks like I can. Perfect. So something, I'm just eyeballing it here, but something like this looks good to me. And this just gives it a better, better feel, makes it look more stable. Okay. Let's do the same thing we did for this base. Let's do that up here on top. So I'm going to click OK on this offset face and click this face here and uh, make sure that I increase this back to 0.1 and go up 0.3 and click OK. And I'm going to push this down, click OK, perfect. Now, a couple of other small tweaks that I wanna make, especially because I think they'll make this look better. So, let's see if we can draw a shape here and here. And we will, trying to decide, let's hide these. and this one, I think. And if I haven't mentioned it already, we can hover over each of these objects and they'll highlight in the viewport for us. So it's really handy for spotting which object you're trying to move or select. Because even with, even with names, these are a little bit tricky to deal with. Okay, so I'm just going to do something like this. Perfect, and maybe one more shape. Let's see. I want to make this a small one. And I believe if we select the point selection, select all of these, and press B, I believe what we used before was about 0 0.085. That's probably not going to work in this case because it looks like a circle. So perhaps something smaller, like I'm going to just type this in and do 0 0.05. Let me actually use backspace 0 0.0, maybe 25. Something like that looks better. Now we could of course work more on this, but uh, this gives you the idea. And same with this curve here. Let's press B. And let's see if we type in 0 0.025, if that looks good, and it does. So that gives us our nice rounded edges. Now, what I wanna do here is uh, I'm going to need to create some shapes to create some booleans. 
So I'm going to go back to face selection and grab, uh, let's see, can we do both of these at once? I don't think we can. So I'm going to just make this bigger, confirm with using enter. These really doesn't matter what these look like. Okay. So just to make sure these work, this uh, it does look like this shape is far enough down that it goes through, but just to make sure for this other shape here, switching over to object selection, grabbing our move tool, pushing that down, perfect. So, Booleans I always get confused as, as far as the order. So I'll probably have to try this a couple times. Well, okay, that looks, looks right. And it looks like we're using difference and say, okay, perfect. And then same here. Grab this one, grab this one. Okay, perfect. Oops, it looks like, you know what? I might just leave that. Looks like it's taller than I wanted it to be, but uh, I'm gonna just leave that. Okay. And that pretty much does it, but let's say we want a rounded edge on the entire column. So I'm going to grab all of these pieces and uh, to start with, I'm going to put them in a group and just label this as COL. And then I'm going to select all of these and use Control C and Control V to copy and paste all of these. And I'm going to hide this group. Essentially what this allows me to do is have a backup in case I want to change something later or create different versions of this column. And so I'm gonna hide that group and all of these, I want to use a Boolean, but instead of using a difference Boolean, I want to use a union Boolean. So I'm going to press Q on the keyboard. We have all the, uh, all the hot keys labeled here for this operation. And this is going to join everything together. I'm going to say, okay, and now we have this one column. So finally, to round out the edges, I am going to select this option for edge select. And let's see, can I select everything? It looks like I'm selecting the curves. So I'm going to, I'm going to hide all these curves because I don't want to, I don't want that to get in the way of what I'm doing here. Select all of these and I'm going to press, because this is a solid, I'm going to press, well, let's see, it's not letting me press D. So I'm going to press B and we can, we can now disable snapping and we can adjust the, the rounded edges. And of course this has a limit based on some part of the mesh, probably, uh, or I shouldn't say mesh, some part of the object, I think it's here. So um, in this case, I don't think that's a big deal. We could choose to deselect the edges here, but uh, I think that looks pretty good. We don't need something that's super round everywhere. And I'm going to choose the G G2 option. Not not really going to change it much at this distance, but uh, prefer that in this case. And I'm going to click OK. So now we have our rounded edges. Now let's see, this is laying on its side. So I want to select the rotate tool, rotate along the X axis, and we'll type in 90 degrees and click OK. Now we want to mirror this and it looks like we're already aligned up with the origin. We don't have to be, but that's gonna make this job a little bit simpler. So I'm going to click the mirror option and I believe it's this this part of the widget that we want to click to switch this around. And that's looking pretty cool. So I'm going to click OK. And there you have it. We have an entire set of columns. And if we want to really push this a little bit further, let's turn snapping on and go back to one meter. And I'm going to copy and paste again 
and move this maybe maybe five maybe maybe about maybe about seven meters or so and then copy and paste again move out 14 meters and maybe one more time and move out 21 meters and if I switch over to perspective mode then I can take a look at all of these columns and there we go that's looking pretty good so I hope you liked this tutorial if you want to see more videos like this please consider subscribing sharing this video with your friends liking this video and hitting the notification bell to stay up to date.